All right, this video is going to help with 14.6. This is trapezoids and kites. These are actually our last quadrilaterals. So um, you can see the book definition here for the trapezoid, and here's a basic picture of some of them. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral, so it has four sides, with exactly one side parallel. Okay, so exactly one side parallel, so the other sides could be totally different um, lengths or they could be congruent and it's still a trapezoid. If they're congruent we like to call this one an isosceles trapezoid so it's the more common one we see. This one's a little bit uglier. Um, and then they were labeling what a leg is in a base and base angles um, and, and things like that but the big understanding is really what is the definition? One pair of parallel sides. Okay, then theorem 56 in our textbook says, okay, if you happen to have an isosceles trapezoid, so one pair of congruent or parallel sides and one pair of congruent sides, then angles on the, the base angles on the top and the base angles on the bottom are congruent. So you might have a problem like this one and it'll say, okay, well, what's angle F? Well, you know they're isosceles, and you know this one's congruent to this one, so this one would have to be 65 degrees. Okay, so pretty basic questions like that you'll see. Then the next theorem says, all right, one other thing about isosceles, or two more, excuse me. Nope, just, the, I guess this is the last one about isosceles, but there's two more over trapezoids. One more thing is if you have isosceles, then we know that those... Um, diagonals are also congruent. The whole entire diagonal is congruent to the other one, kind of like a rectangle. Those are congruent as well. So the last one's a little bit harder. It says, if I have a trapezoid that has a midsection, so this midsection is um, bisecting RT and it's bisecting AP so you can see that this one's congruent to this one and this side's congruent to this side. If that's true then you have this formula for that mid uh, segment or line that's in the middle. It's one half of the top one plus the bottom one and you will see a couple problems similar to that and let's do one so that we make sure you know how to do it correctly. Okay so my thing back up. What if I have something that looks like this? All right, and I say, okay, this is x plus 2, this one's 8, and this one's 4x minus 10. What is the length of that mid-segment? And I could label it, but either way, what is that length of that mid-segment? Well, we know it's x plus 2, and it will equal 1 half this one plus this one. So 4x minus 10 plus 8. And then you have to solve that formula. Well, this whole thing is being times by 1 half, which you can do. You could distribute it, or you can times the other side by 2, timesing everything by 2. Kind of depends. I'll just distribute it so that um, I don't confuse you too much. So we have x plus 2 equals 1 half times 4x is 1 half of 4, so you get 2x. And we can do this two ways. Probably we can do half of 10 is 5, half of 8 is 4. Oops, that's a minus 5, sorry. And half of 8 is 4, so I did half separately. Or I could have said, okay, what is negative 10 plus 8, which would have given me 2, and then half of 2 is 1, which is the same answer, negative 1, excuse me, that I would get here. Okay, so let's simplify a little more. We'd have x plus 2 equals 2x minus 1. Um, then here I could subtract the x this way, so minus my x, and I'll still have a 2 equals 2 minus 1 is 1x minus the 1, and then add the 1 over to get 3. So x is 3. Still don't know the length of that midsection, but I now know x. 3 plus 2 is 5. So I can get 5 
So the mid segment is equal to five units, you know, inches, whatever unit they use. So that's the harder one looking at um, using that mid segment formula. And you can always pause the video and write these down. The next theorem and last one is what is a kite? Okay, last shape that we need to go over. So a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent sides. Um, congruent with no opposite sides congruent. Another way that I've seen this defined is you have adjacent sides congruent. So this side's congruent to this one, this one's congruent to this one. Okay, and that's our, that's our definition. That's it. So um, let's look at, we know a couple things if we know it's a kite. So if we have those adjacent congruent sides, two pairs of congruent sides, then we also know that the diagonals meet at a 90 degree angle. That's super convenient and we can use that with some of our problems. But before I do, well yeah, no, maybe I'll do that first. Let's do a kite problem that you will see. Let's see how pretty I can draw. This is my second example. Uh, okay, uh, that's not <laughs> oh yeah, that's some good drawing I did there. Oh well. So let's say I know that's congruent to that, and I know this one's congruent to this one, and I want to know one, two, three. Um, and I know this angle here happens to be 58 degrees. What <laughs> that definitely doesn't look like what I labeled, but that's okay. So on this kite, and we know it's a kite because these two are congruent and these two are congruent. Um, what is one, two, and three? So we need to find the measure of angle one, the measure of angle two, and the measure of angle three. One of them is super easy. The measure of angle one has to be 90 because those um, match or meet at a 90 degree angle, the uh, diagonals. Now, if that's 90 and that one's 58, we can find two by subtracting them from 180 to get 32 degrees, right? So 58, um, maybe double check, minus, yeah, 90, that's right, okay. For some reason it looked wrong when I glanced at it. Now, this is where it's a little tricky and, um, I guess we'll get a little bit more used to it. Why? But three and, or excuse me, I guess the 58 and the three are going to end up being congruent. And why would they be congruent is because um, if we look at this triangle, this whole triangle here and this whole triangle here, we have these sides congruent and this side congruent. Kind of ignore that middle line. And so you can see that this triangle is congruent to this triangle, meaning by congruent triangles, this one always has to equal this one. So you can you can use that once you've seen it in a lot of your problems and go quicker. I think there's two problems in your homework. You can be like, okay, they're next to each other. It's a kite Pff, congruent. Okay. Um, so this one is going to be 58 degrees. So let's look, then that's the type of problem we're going to see with a kite. Let's look at this little diagram in the book. This is our relationships for quadrilaterals. So what do we have to be to be a quadrilateral? We have to be uh, four sides. That's it. And that's what this whole chapter on is four sides. Over here is a kite because it's kind of in its own little category and there's no special kites or anything. So um, you have no parallel sides and that makes you a kite with those congruent sides over here. Okay. So either you could be a funky quadrilateral, see how their picture is drawn and, or you could be a kite or you could be a trapezoid and that special case of an isosceles trapezoid. Or you could be a parallelogram going this way and we had three kinds of parallelograms. A rectangle, a rhombus, and a square. So remember, if I have a square 
I am also a rhombus. I'm also a rectangle, a parallelogram, and a quadrilateral. All of those names go with a square. It meets all of their definitions. Now, square is the only one that meets its own definition, but backward it works. So if I have a rectangle, that rectangle is also a parallelogram. It's also a quadrilateral, okay? Kind of the same here. Isosceles trapezoid is also a trapezoid and it's also a quadrilateral. Rhombus is also a parallelogram. It's also a quadrilateral. So these kind of diagrams you might want to write in your notes just to help you remember. The overall idea of this entire chapter is summed up right there with that picture. Okay, all of the theorems and everything that we've learned about different angles and sides and how to find them um, all depend on each specific one, but this is the overall look. So hopefully that helps you with kites and trapezoids. Very few theorems with those two, but uh, there you go.